Here we are, Tuesday, May 22nd. Sports Bit, Betty and Insight today. Paulie and Teddy, SBRPicks.com. I'm at Real Sports Bit. He's at Teddy underscore covers. Rocket season on the line. We'll talk about game four coming up and the adjusted series price in a bit. And we'll get to week one. College football lines released yesterday here in Vegas at the South Point. Some good matchups. We start a week early again in late August, and we got some major movement to talk about and what some uh, wise guys are betting. Play the day before we get out of here, and we'll turn the shot clock on involving college football as well. Another conference final, another comfortable win. Brown lays it in with seven seconds left. That's the only reason it it landed uh, nine instead of a double-digit win. Cavs cover. Play of the day winner, it goes over. 111 to 102. Series tied at two. And I could... Teddy, the Celtics, just like the Rockets, the Celtics missed 15 layups or dunks. Cut it to nine a few times. Couldn't get the big basket to get over the edge and make a big run. Uh, they, they, the big thing came down to the first quarter when they trailed by 16. Yeah, I had a big bet on Boston last night. And uh, you talk about those dunks and layups making you crazy. 15 of them, <laughs> the Celtics missed. Bunnies yeah. around the basket. They rallied. They cut it to seven in the fourth. I'm like, here we go. The Celtics have done this before, but let's give Cleveland credit. From two-point range, the Cavs 57% from the floor. They were plus 10 uh, on the boards as well. And even though LeBron was the only guy for Cleveland to really get going offensively in game number four, Celtics didn't play great. (laughs) I mean, certainly not on the offensive end. Uh, They got out-rebounded. They did force turnovers, but bottom line, here's the quote from Brad Stevens. Quote, it's best two out of three to go to the NBA Finals. Doesn't get better than that. Ultimately, ultimately, everybody that didn't think this was going to be tough. I mean, everything is tough. In this deal, it's a blast to have grit in your teeth, get up off the mat, and go after it again. That's part of it. I like that mentality for Boston. But, I mean, the first half blowout, the second half Celtics rally, you know, uh, we did see a faster pace last night. Uh, than we'd seen in any previous game in the series. Hence, the game going over the total. But, of course, lots of free throw attempts held that helped that get over the total as well. It wasn't one of those situations where the refs swallowed their whistles. I thought they were terrible. Foster and uh, I, can't, I can't remember the other guy's name uh, who's had, had that run in with Rondo. 59 attempted free, combined free throw attempts. And how do you guard LeBron when they're calling the ticky-tack stuff? Morris had five. Brown had five. Love was in foul trouble as well. There was a sequence there in the third quarter where they were calling a foul every time down the floor on the Celtics. And for both teams, uh, I thought the Celtics were rushing shots again, especially Rozier taking some quick shots as well. Brown shot 23 times. They are 9-0 and straight up in ATS at home. They're 1-6 and on the road. And that one win, they were down four with a minute left and beat the Sixers. Completely different team, home road. So far in the postseason, it certainly has. But again... This stuff starts to get baked into the numbers as we move forward into game five of this of this of this series series here. And it's pretty clear we're seeing at least a little bit of market respect uh, for Boston. Some books of Celtics plus one, some books of Celtics minus one. Be interested to see where that line uh, ends up grading out. We'll preview that game right here on Sports Bit tomorrow. All right, it was a short card, big win, gutsy win for the Capitals. They shut out the Lightning 3-0. They force force a Game 7 Wednesday on the road against Tampa. Uh, they've struggled in Game 7s. Tampa's been terrific. It ends that streak, too. Tampa had been 7-0 and all time in playoff games in D.C. Hard-hitting, fantastic game, and they force a Game 7 winner. Gets the Golden Knights. I can't believe I'm saying that. And the Stanley Cup Finals on Memorial Day. Bad for the books. Yankees 190 up to 220. They win 10-5, third straight game. With at least five, what, with five home runs, I think it was first time in franchise history, and the Orioles under nine and a half down to nine, three two final there. Twins under from nine down to eight and a half, and Padres over from seven and a half to eight. All winners for the players. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for good ways to make money betting against line moves in baseball or football or basketball, I'll tell you what, the totals moves tend to be fairly sharp. And as we saw last night, Orioles under get steamed, Twins under get steamed, Padres over get steamed, all right side winners. You know, the the big steam moves for MLB totals are moves that I tend to not to try to fade. And of course, the Yankees, as you mentioned, taking money again and winning again. The Bronx Bombers becoming a real problem for bookmakers, much the way the Dodgers were 
for extended stretches last year. Let's not forget, you can probably, you can turn a winner into a loser with a point spread. When the point spread gets high enough, you can never turn a winner into a loser when it comes to money line wagers. As long as the Yankees continue to win, the bookmakers are going to have a hard time with this team because they have clearly gotten a lot of support from wise guys and from public betters. Support that's not going anywhere. <laughs> the Yankees have a big bandwagon here as we approach Memorial Day. Yep, and the NFL can uh, kiss it. Integrity the, integrity of the game business, and they vote 31-1 to 1 to give us an NFL team with the Raiders. So uh, it's a bunch of bunk. And for years fighting and challenging New Jersey, I'm glad New Jersey and Monmouth Park suing the major four, four major sports leagues. What's Goodell up to now that he – He's got to he finally came out with a statement here after what happened last week with the Supreme Court. Sure. And this is this is all good stuff. OK, the fact that we're talking about gambling with the NFL commissioner, this is a good thing. All right. Now, this expected the legislation that everyone's trying to get to work out good is another question entirely. But right now we're on the same side of the NFL. NFL. Here's a, the, the from the statement, you know. We are asking Congress to enact uniform standards for states that choose to legalize sports betting that include, at a minimum, four core principles. So let's talk about the four core principles. One, there must be substantial consumer protections. Of course, we have that here in Las Vegas. It's not anything difficult. That's not controversial in the slightest. Sports leagues, number two, sports can protect our content, content and intellectual property from those who attempt to steal or misuse it. Again, that sounds fairly reasonable. What that means in actual law is another question entirely. Three, fans will have access to official, reliable league data. No problem with that. And four, law enforcement will have the resources, monitoring, and enforcement tools necessary to protect our fans and to penalize bad actors here at home and abroad. All of that, Polly, makes sense, sounds reasonable. Of course, it's the NFL, so we know there's got to be some dirty stuff behind the scenes. But bottom line, I'm agreeing with Goodell. I can't ever remember that happening before. All right. Well, ridiculous. <laughs> Good for you there. Uh, we'll see what happens here with, with a couple of states ready to go as well. Maybe as soon as, as soon as uh, early June coming up. Like the show? Help us keep the lights on. Please make sure to comment, share, and subscribe to all the Sportsbook Review videos. Thanks so much. Best of luck. Enjoy the game. <laughs>